Well, for those who don't know, I am a school shooter. I did 17 years in prison, and I have video. That creator has over 250,000 followers. If you Google his name, it says internet personality. The way white men are able to rebrand themselves after doing unbelievable things, I mean, it just never ends. Okay, go watch that video, it's, it's so great. I wanna um, talk about another example on here because men do this all the time. And you know, I had to private all my videos except one about Dax Shepard and how problematic he is, but now he's married to a Disney princess and so he has totally rebranded with her help as this like amazing husband and dad and blah. Um, but I don't wanna talk about him. I wanna talk about another white man that has rebranded and, and then compare it to the women who were crucified in the media the same time as him and just how differently they were treated. Because I'm gonna tie all this together, be patient with me. So this guy, remember this guy, Ryan? Um, Captain America, Ryan Locked or whatever. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Remember what a disgrace he was in Rio? Okay, let me just review what he did for those who don't know. He basically went drinking with his um, bros in Rio, um, got drunk, got super destructive, right? Destroyed property, got caught, um, and then he lied about all of it. And on top of that, um, he was stoking some xenophobic, racist fears, right? I mean, I, I've, I've been to Rio, I spent several weeks there, and I swear everything I read about Rio was like, be careful of the crime. I'm not saying there's not crime, but everything that I read for American tourists U.S. American tourists was absolutely dripping in racism. They didn't explicitly say it; they implied it, right? So this go this guy goes there, causes a bunch of problems, and then stokes what he knows is already there, and paints himself as the victim, and then lies about it. I mean, this is still up on his Instagram. <laughs> Look at what he, it's it's traumatic to be out late. It's traumatic to be out late with your friends in a foreign country with a language barrier and have a stranger point a pew pew at you and demand money um, to let you leave. But regardless of my behavior, anyone blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> even in this crazy statement, you know, but I take respons accept responsibility for my role in this happening and have learned some valuable lessons. Don't you just love it when white men learn valuable lessons at the expense of all these other people, even though he's just lying, okay? So he basically got to be the ugly American and just walk away from this mess of his own making while making others live with it. And that is like very, very, that, that goes right in line with what men do, right? White men do, especially in the United States. Literally piss wherever he wants, lie about it, and fly away from his problem. Whereas if he was not white, he would have been ostracized, shamed, his career would be over. With his pretty face, his doofy personality, and charmingly slow demeanor, during his interview. Now, this article, this article was comparing the, the treatment of him versus uh, Gabby Douglas. Now, before I get into the horrific treatment of her, some people were like, yeah, but you know, he's um, Cuban American. They address that here because he's got, you know, like he's very much identifying with his whiteness. And we know in the United States, whiteness is a whole thing. Like the, the US is obsessed with whiteness. It was literally created to justify genocide and slavery and anti-blackness and all of this stuff, right? And so he knows he has white privilege. The dude has blue hair and doesn't seem to talk a whole lot about his Cuban American heritage. Like we know that, that whiteness is, proximity to whiteness gives you so much privilege, right? Now let's compare that to the same Olympics and what they did to, to, to Gabby Douglas. This unbelievably talented woman who was 20, just barely not a teenager. And the way they treat, because you know, we know that they uh, adultify black people and infantilize white people, right? Especially white women, but white men too. Ryan Locke was 34 when he did all that nonsense and they pass it off as boys will be boys. Gabby Douglas was 20 at the same Olympics and look what they did. They never, ever backed off of this whole putting her hand over her heart thing. She was standing at attention, standing in respect. Cause she didn't put her hand over her heart. They crucified her. Um, and for not jumping up and cheering hard enough, hard enough being the, the key 
for her teammates at the all around and then they even went after her hair. In the long history of racism associated with policing black women's hair, they did that too. They did that too at the Olympics, right? They've been policing female athletes. I mean, do you remember how much crap she got for this? Endless crap for this face. And here's the infuriating part. Both these women were victims of Larry Nassar. Both of these women somehow, I mean, all of those women, especially the five, they won medals despite what this man was doing to them. And they were brave enough to go against him to protect other women and testify despite this. Look at this. Look, Michaela faced of a $100,000 fine if she speaks at the Larry ha Nasser sentencing after USA Gymnastics made her sign an NDA, ordering her to stay quiet about her abuse as part of her 1.25 million settlement. Y'all, policing their facial expressions, their bodies, their hair if they're black women, all the while in front of, in front of everyone. Like, look at this, this picture. I can't, like, I can believe it because I did um, unbelievable things right after being raped because of trauma responses kicking in and me just getting the stuff done and feeling dead inside and wanting to literally die. That comes later. This, 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 this photo, all this was happening to them. Horrific things were happening to them literally right before Olympic competitions. Gabby Douglas came the first American to claim gold medals in her team in individual all-around events and the first African-American to win the all-around in London, right? All of that. Meanwhile, getting all this abuse from a man who had hundreds of victims and she still spoke out against him to protect women along with her teammates. And what did this bumbling fool get to do? Rebrand. Let me show you how this man rebranded. I don't have anything against him. I really hope he's a better person now. I hope he understands what he did. I don't think he does. I've yet to hear him talk about just how messed up it was. Let me just show you what immediately happened after this whole nonsense happened in Rio. He was dating this woman for a few months, or I don't know how long they were dating, but they were posting on Instagram a few months before Rio. Okay, this was him. Playboy, cool guy, right? This is April, 2016, hot playboy model girlfriend no judgment towards women who pose for playboy if you get your money but she rebranded to help his image because before the incident in rio this was her and this like monster bleh. and this and this again not judging her when i tell y'all that men use women for social currency and to rebrand i mean look at dax dax is a bad boy and now he's a loving dad all kinds of social social capital September 2016, this, up, oh, December, this, pregnancy announcement. Oh, and also October, he gets to rebrand by being on Dancing with the Stars. How convenient for him. Great timing. Got the princess wedding with the prince going on. Eating cookies with his niece. Great way to rebrand, bro. Men use women and girls. Do you see this, y'all? Do you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, it's hard to believe that this man created an international scandal, racially charged one, and faked about being robbed in Rio. And like, like no, who, this guy? No way. Oh, before they were pregnant, he started doing it with a dog. <laughs> dog dad, dog dad, dog dad. Then this, this, this. Not a criminal, just a dad. Halloween dad, loves being a dad. And then there were two. I want you to notice, do you see all the white the hat, the like trad mom thing going on here. Two kids, social currency. All American couple, just like you and me. Most importantly, a good dad, Prince Charming. So why am I going to all this? The way this is not for bullying or harassment, it's for educational purposes. These women may never heal from their trauma, not only from Nasser, but from the bullying they receive, and especially the racism they receive from the whole world. While this guy gets a new start, and this guy gets a new start. A school shooter who terrorized an entire school. Teachers, children will never get over this. You need men to heal from their trauma and talk more about their schmegsual abuse. But I'm sorry. His father left when he was four. Same. Schmegsually abused when he was five and six. Same, except it was ongoing by a family member. Unlike him, I didn't have a supportive family. I and other survivors didn't traumatize a bunch of people and get just to start over. White men get to rebrand.